Hi everyone, Maria Tyler here. Today we're going to look at restating the income statements. Now, traditionally this is the one we get the most questions on and the one that students find they tear their hair out on the most. So hopefully this video will make you a little bit less stressed when completing this statement and, and make you tear out your hair a little bit less. Um, I say restating the income statements because some companies will have two income statements. They'll have your normal income statement or profit and loss statement, and then they'll have your comprehensive income statement. Some companies will put those two together as one. Now, hopefully you'll know about this because you've already, I address this and you've already done it with entering the financial statements. So everybody should have put their two statements into one statement already in their entered financial statements. If your company already had it as the one statement, then you've simply entered the whole thing. So where Simon's had the two statements, had the income statement and the statement of comprehensive income, and I've already entered them as one statement when I entered um, my financial statements in this step. So I scroll right down to my income statements. I had my profit and loss first, and then right down the bottom here, I entered my comprehensive income statement. So I've entered it essentially as one statement. So that's why I say um, income statements. So we're going to look at restating it. So the point of restating it is again to split our revenue and expenses and of course our comprehensive income into O and F as we did with the other two um, statements we've already done. Now just a note, in your statement of changes in equity, which was the first statement that we restated, you'll notice that we actually have already split comprehensive income up into O and F. So that's a double check for you. When you split your CI, you can actually go straight to your statement of comprehensive income and link straight from there or restate it again from your original statement, which is what I do and I'll show you how to do. And then I check that against the figures that I've already put in my statement, in my restated statement of changes in equity in my spreadsheet above. So we're simply separating everything again into O and F. Now my tips, there's a couple things we need to do to prepare. Um, one of them hopefully you did already when you entered your financial statements and that was identifying your company's finance income. So it's going to make life a lot easier when we come to restating later and you'll see why if you've identified your finance income. So when we entered the financials in the video I, I prepared when I was entering the financials, you'll remember I split out my, I went and found in the notes to my financial statements the finance income and I actually deducted that from the total revenue figure. So I just split, so where's Simon's has only put one line for revenue and I went and found finance income and took that away from revenues. So um, the figure that was left here was simply just the original figure that Words Farms had put in in their financials minus the interest income that I found in the notes. So that's my operating revenue figure that I've separated out. So that was done previously. So if you haven't done that, please go back and do that now because you are going to have to do it. And if you don't do it when you hand it in, it makes a difference to your final figures and your marker will tell you to go back and do it anyway because you'll need to do it for the next step of the assignment which is the ratios um, subsequent to this. So if you haven't already, please go back and identify your finance income. You also have to identify your company tax rate. And that's quite easy to do actually because Martin's actually embedded that in the study guide itself. So in chapter four of the study guide, I think from memory it's page 16. So restating the income statement is from pages 15 to 19 in the study guide. You can actually read about it. Martin does restate Ryman Healthcare's income statement, he shows you how to do that, he talks you through it in the study guide. So that's page 15. If we go down to page 16, yep, yeah, down here he's actually linked it for you. So that's very easy, you just simply click on that and it will take you to the KPMG's global tax rates. Um, and it, it will look something like this and I'll say corporate tax rates table. What you need to do is hopefully you know your company by now because you've already written some assignment on it and you know what country of domicile your, your um, country operates in. So for me, Wes Farmers is Australian. So go down to the country um, of, your, of your firm. So mine is Australia, and you can actually see they've listed a whole heap of tax rates for the last decade and a, and a bit. So for Australia, I mean, it's easy anyway. Our um, company rate hasn't predominantly changed. So um, for the last four years, you only need to identify for the last four years your company tax rate. Mine's 30%. Yours may be different every year. Some countries have differed. 
um, every year. So just make sure that you are using the right tax rate for the right year. And how we do that quite easily is pop it in your workings straight away. So having identified that company tax rate, go to your spreadsheet in the restated financials, scroll right down to the bottom right underneath where we started working with cash and you can actually uh, pop it in there. So put company income tax rate and then mine was 30%. So I'm going to put that in. It was 30% for all years. So 2018 right back to 2015 and that way it's done. So when I come to needing the tax rate, when we're restating our income statement, I can simply link straight there. Also, if I accidentally make a mistake, I can just change it down there and I won't have to change it when I um, restate my income statement because it's already linked in there. So just pop it in there and then you know that's already done. So that's one of the tips too. Um, all right. Um, must be linked. Like all of your other restated financials, you have to link this income statement. It's very important. Um, where you can use formulae for your totals, please do. That serves as a double check as well. And make sure you're linking. Again, linking, linking, linking. You will um, be marked on linking it back to your original financials. Now, there's a couple of checks I've put in here as well. So the first one is that your operating income plus your net financing expenses should equal your comprehensive income in your original financials. Now, essentially, this is the sum of the O's that we're going to classify, and this total is the sum of the F's. So remember, the whole purpose of restating in this unit is to separate into O and F. So the whole purpose of, um, so the sum of the O section is called operating income, and the sum of the F section is called net financing expenses. So we're simply just rearranging the original items in your original financial statements. So overall totals should still remain the same. So your comprehensive income should still be the same comprehensive income from your original statement of, um, from your original income statements. All we're doing is simply splitting them into O and F. So we're just rearranging, taking those items from our original statement, rearranging them into O's and F's, and then the overall total should still match. And that's the same with all of the other statements that we've done as well. Statement of comprehensive income, uh, statement of changes in equity and the balance sheet. So all we're doing is just rearranging. So check firstly that the O's and the F's match the O. And we will do that when I complete doing the Wes Farmers one. We will do that as a check. The second one is actually something you've already done. In, in your restated statement of changes in equity, You the only thing we did in that statement was to, to split our comprehensive income into O and F. So when we do our reset income statements now, when we split CI, we can go and check that the split for O and F that we've done in our income statements matches the split for O and F in comprehensive income back up in the statement of changes in equity. So that's the second check that we can do. Okay, so restating again, if you haven't read chapter four, please, please read it. It's where Martin talks you through step by step um, of restating. So if I just quickly flick back to the study guide now, tells you the purpose, tells you how um, we're going to restate as well um, and some of the backgrounds there. It tells you some of the important acronyms that we're going to um, calculate. Here's Roman Healthcare's income statement. Here's the restated income statement. And this is where I get the structure from that I'll show you, um, that I'll talk through on this PowerPoint slide when I go back. This is actually literally where I've got it from. So you'll notice Martin puts the operating section first. So this all that you can see on the screen is all operating. And then right down the bottom, he puts the financing section underneath. And each of these sections, those two sections have the actual same structure. So you'll notice Martin puts revenue first, then expenses, then tax, then comprehensive income. And again, from here, he puts um, income and expense first, then tax, then comprehensive income. So, and then he gets a total for each section and adds that up and it should match back to comprehensive income. So that's the setup. That's what I've used as the structure. And again, Martin shows you how he classifies those. So please make sure you read chapter four before even doing this. Stop the video now and go back and read just even those pages before we restate this. Now, it's important I talk you through the setup because in past years, students have said, you've shown me how to do it, but you haven't told me why or what we're doing. I need some sort of physical structure to see. And so in the lectures, I used to do this in the lectures. We're now taking it out and I'll just pre-record these videos um, before each term. So I used to hand draw in the lectures this diagram. This is sort of the best I can do it in PowerPoint. 
Um, essentially what we're doing is splitting, like everything, your items in your statement to O and F. So we, here's the structure, here's O and here's F. And we have four categories we put under, we put income, expense, tax and comprehensive income. And again, income, expense, tax and comprehensive income. Now, just a little clarification down here. We usually, in most companies, have greater financing costs than finance income. So usually I'll put the, the larger figure at the top. So in my case, I'll have finance expenses first and then finance income um, second, and then I'll do the tax and the comprehensive income. Also with the tax component, I actually calculate the tax, I'll put 100% of tax up here, so I'll link straight to my original financials. We put 100% of the tax here to start with. Then when we get down here, we actually calculate the tax attributable to financing expenses, which is why we needed the company tax rates. And then we, then, then we take this figure away from the 100% of tax that we've put up here. So say we've calculated this tax and it works out to be say $40 and we've put $100 worth of tax, say $100 was our 100% of our tax. So we put, I calculate $40 that's attributable to my net financing expenses and then I take that $40 away from the full 100 up here. So I'm left with $60 up here and that's how we split the tax paid essentially. We say okay, 40% there and 60% up here. So it's essentially the overview of what we're doing. And then we, of course, split our comprehensive income into O and F. And this little section down here, we've actually already done in the statement of changes in equity up above. So this is where you can check the total and the total to your statement of changes in equity above. Now, to get a sum for the operating section, we, you know, add, minus, minus, add and get a, the operating income. And then again, with the financing section, we take away the difference, take away the tax that we have to pay or add it, if it's mathematically different, and then um, sort out the CI, uh, add CI, and then we get a sum, and we call it net financial expenses. Now again, you might be different, your company may have more income than expense, in which case you'll have net financing income. And I'll talk you through that as we go through Wes Farmers. Once we add up these two subtotals, we should still get back to the original comprehensive income from our original financial statements. Okay, so let's go through and restate now. So we'll scroll back up through here. So we finished restating our statement of change and equity. Here's, here's the split up for me. Well, actually I didn't have any financing comprehensive income this year uh, for Wets Farmers, I did last year. Um, so actually all I'm gonna split, so my, my CI section, I'm going to have zero down here. I don't actually have any financial comprehensive income, but I do have all of my CIs is operating. So that'll be a fairly simple total to match. Um, so I'll need to, to sum these three and that will be the same as my other comprehensive income. So that's the operating comprehensive income total I'm going to be checking against. Okay, so down here, let's get rid of these lines on my balance sheet. All right. So again, so the structure that I want is to, to set it out in this format. So I'm going to start with my operating income. So let's go and put that as a heading, operating income. And I'm simply going to go through my original financials now and I'm going to actually classify O and F. That's something I should do before we even start. So we know our finance income is F. Um, don't classify headings or totals. This one's not a heading. Remember, it was a heading originally, but I changed it because I had to separate out my finance income. So my um, revenue is operating. My finance income is, is financing, so F. Don't classify your totals. Don't classify your headings. Raw materials is operating. Put cap block on. Employee benefits are operating to do with day-to-day -day operations. Freight, occupancy, depreciation, impairment. Now, other expenses, have a look in your financial statements. So usually a note that tells you what these other expenses are. Usually they are operating, but just check because yours may have some financing component in there as well. This is other income. So you notice that it's positive amount. So when we're actually separating out operating income from financing income, we will put these in there as well. So my other income in worst farmers case is operating and also the share of net profits in their associates and joint ventures in my case is also operating. Now again, in your company's case, it may not be so check your notes to the financials. Don't classify um, totals. Finance costs is obviously financing, that's a total. 
income tax and spends is operating and financing because we're going to do that split. So we, first of all, we lump it into operating and then we calculate it down in financing and then take away the financing component from the total we've put in operating. So that's a total, that's a heading. Um, loss after tax, so that was to do with their operations of their subsidiaries and again for their subsidiaries, so it's all operating. Um, was that a total? Yes, I didn't identify that as a total. That's, uh, that's why you should do formatting and check. Lucky I thought about it. So see in here, that's actually a total. So don't classify your totals because you will be out with your CI. Profit attributable to members of the parent, that's a total. Always a heading. So down here is another figure. Okay, so my exchange differences on translations, that's operating. My cash flow heads are operating as well. Now, remember I've already classified these when I reset my statement of changes and equity. So I kind of knew they were already operating. But just checking them again, um, my defined benefit plans to do with employees and the tax on that is also operating. And then I've got two totals, so don't classify your totals. All right, so pretty much everything for me is operating except for my finance income and finance costs. Now, that may be the case for most of your companies, but for some of your companies, it won't be. So um, just make sure that you go through every item and you check it out. And it might actually say in the name of it, um, financing expenses for some sort of finance endeavor. So it might actually say the word financial in there for you. Okay, so now I'm, I can simply go and link to my operating income. So that's my heading, so let's fold and underline that. So I'm gonna link everywhere it's got O for, for income, I'm gonna link to. So link to my revenue. Revenue. Now I had some other income as well. What I like to do is actually highlight once I've done done it, just so I make sure I'm not forgetting some. Because last year I did my highlighting and I actually forgot all of the discontinued operation section. So this is my check um, when I go and highlight what I've actually used. So I've linked that. Don't link this because it's F. These are all expenses, and I'm just doing income at the moment. So here's two two more income items. So I'm going to go through and link these two now. So here's my one and two. So again, link the figures as well. Make sure you're linking the correct figures. So I know that they're income because they are positive figures. That's why I group them up here when I'm talking about operating income. Now I'm going to go through my discontinued because I know because last year I forgot to include them. Now uh, that's financing, that's going to come next. My discontinued is also operating. The last one I linked it, I had to go back and, and add in a few lines. And it's okay if you forget, that's why we highlight things. That one, and it was a good example actually of why we highlight things in last year's video. Because my CI didn't match and I was like, hang on, what have I done? Oh, I've forgotten these, my discontinued operations. So this year I was like, make sure I don't forget my discontinued operations. Okay, so let me go and highlight those in red so I know that I've done those. You can highlight your totals as well because you don't enter your totals. Okay, so I'll just highlight that because it's near what I've already entered. Okay, so I think that's all. My discontinued, this one's actually an, an expense, so I probably could have put that one with um, the expenses. In fact, that's what I'm going to do. So let's just put that back to normal and take it out of, which one was it? The loss. Yeah. So I only just want to link that one. Delete and link just my my positive figure. So I'm keeping all the positives with the positives. All I'm trying to do is all my all my operating income should be a positive figure. That's all I'm trying to do. Just lump it. Now, if you've got, some of you might have positive figures and then negative figures in some years, so it might just say positive, positive, then you've got two negatives, that's fine. You can either put it in income or expenses, it doesn't matter. And really, this probably didn't matter either, but I just chose to put my positives, because it is, they're both positives in both of these years. Whoops, don't move them. Um, and both negatives in those years, I just chose to put this one with my income, and I'll list that one with my operating expenses next. 
Okay, so I'm not doing a comprehensive income yet. So all I'm doing is just operating income. So anywhere I'm seeing an O down here and anywhere that it's a positive figure I'm putting in, I think I've got everything. My highlighting will help me check. So let's put a total in here. Total operating income. Italic. And let's do a sum. Now my next section is operating expenses. So I do a heading for operating expenses. And anywhere I've got an O listed, that's a negative, which is the bracketed amounts, I'm going to link to. So I've literally got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven here to link. So I'm gonna just fill down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Don't want the formatting with it and take off bowling. Now I'll link the figures. More materials and inventory. One, two, three, five, six, seven. And fill without formatting and fill that across. Take off the bowling. Okay, so that's my O, so I can literally highlight. I'm going to just highlight my headings as well because I don't need to link those. They're all red. I've dealt with all of that. Anything that's in red, I know I've dealt with. So I've only got to deal with the black things left over. So that's F. I don't want to put F in yet. I'm still just doing with O. I'll show you how to do that next. So we'll deal with that later. Um, here we go. Discontinued operations. So I'm going to add that in. That's also an O that's a negative. Equals. There's my O that's a negative. Make sure that I let's highlight from here. I've dealt with all of that. You can highlight your totals and your headings because it just makes it easier to spot the black that you've got to deal with. There's another total. You can just highlight that and get rid of it. Okay, now I'm gonna deal with my comprehensive income later. So I think I've done all of my operating expenses. Total operating expenses. And that is simply the sum of those amounts. So I've split my OIs and my OEs. Operating income, operating expenses. Okay, so next component I have to do is my tax. I'll put a heading in and we'll call it tax expense because I've paid. Your company might have actually um, received a tax refund, in which case it's a tax benefit and you'll know that by the way that your company's actually entered it in. So you'll see here Wes Farmers has entered it in brackets, which means it's an expense, so they've paid that tax. They've made a profit and they've paid tax on that profit, so it's a negative, it's an outgoing. If your company's got a positive figure there, then it's a tax benefit. They received a refund, which means they most likely made a loss, um, so the taxman gave them a refund. So they've actually got a positive amount there, so in which case you can just call this tax benefit and you'll have the opposite sign. doesn't matter, just make sure that we're changing the mathematics um, to suit our company. So you've got to talk yourself through the logic. So we're firstly going to list, I'm going to call this tax reported. And we're going to link directly to this figure here. So that's my tax that is actually reported, literally. That's why I call it tax reported. And I can highlight that even though I'm going to split it. I know that I'm going to split it later on by the structure. So I can still highlight it and say I've dealt with it. Um, and I'm going to leave... In here, for me, there's going to be a tax benefit. That's the that's the amount that I'm going to calculate in this section down here that's attributable to financing, so my tax benefit, and then I'm going to take it away from that 100% of tax that I've just put in here. So I leave 100% in there for now. Leave this blank for now. We will link later on to the financing tax. And then I'm just going to put um, call it a net tax expense and simply sum the two. So I've already set it all up. This should work for me. Okay, so, so set it all up and leave it blank because we will link to that um, soon. Okay, um, now what am I... So I've, that's the tax dealt with. That's literally as easy as, as it gets, as hard as it gets, I should say. Comprehensive income, I've already split it up and I pretty much know all of my comprehensive income is operating. So that's going to be all of it. When I get down here, I'm literally going to have nothing to do. Um, so I'll go and link to all of my operating CI now. So we'll call it operating comprehensive income. Uh, 
on and I'm going to go and literally link to all of my O's down here. Where I see O, I'm going to link to, and of course all of them are O's, so I'm going to link to all of them. So that one, that one I've got one, two, three, four, five, six to link through. One, two, three, four, five, six. Take the bolding off and I'm aligned in my heading. Oh, I forgot to fill without formatting. Just go and do that again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Fill without formatting. Take the bowling off. We don't need the bowling. Let's go and link some figures. Exchange differences. Is that one? Six down here. Fill it across nice and easy. Take off the bold. Pull that across. So I've dealt with those. I like the headings as well, so I can get rid of those. I've dealt right down to there so far. Now I've got to link those two as well. So I'm just going to link. You know, I've got O in my comprehensive income. I have to go and link. I think that's the last two. Okay, and these two are just totals, have I missed anything, oh yes, just my finance stuff, okay, which I'll do next, alright, so that's my operating comprehensive income, so I'm going to call it total operating comprehensive income. And that literally is just going to be a sum of everything, as my other ones have been, pretty much summing everything. Uh, this one was a, that one was a sum of this. This one was the sum of that. My tax, net tax offence was the sum of those two. And this one is the sum of my operating comprehensive income. Okay, so I should, probably should put some underlines in so I know which ones are my totals. Just makes it a bit easier for me to see what's going on at a glance. There's my total expenses there. Makes it look a little bit neater. All right. Don't need that in bold either. Okay. So now I've done my whole operating section. I've put my income, my expense, my tax, and my comprehensive income, and I've got little subtotals here. Now I'm going to go and see and get a total, I guess, for my OI. And I'm literally going to type the acronym in there as well. I'm going to call it my comprehensive operating it's very important it's my operating income after tax and i'm going to put oi and the reason is when we do our ratios the ratios some of the ratio calculators will tell you the acronym of what you need to link to so if you put your acronyms in here it's so easy you just go okay i need oi for this one i'll go and find where oi is rather than trying to re-identify what your oi actually is and you've forgotten so put the oi in there and it's literally a sum of all of this so it's because of the way that we've entered it, because I've linked it directly to my original financials and Wes Farmers has entered my expenses as negatives, I can simply do income plus expenses, which is because I've entered it as a negative. So essentially it's doing income minus expense because minus a minus figure is a plus. So again, the same thing, add in my net tax expense, which essentially is minusing it off there because I've already entered it as a minus. Well, I've linked it to my original financials where it's entered as a minus and adding in my income. So the formula is income, so if you haven't entered them as negatives or if in your original financials, if your company didn't enter them as negative figures, which is very unusual, but let's just say you know your company hasn't, if you've entered your expenses as positive figures, then you will need to make sure that you're doing mathematically the right thing, which is revenue minus expenses, minus any tax expense or plus any tax benefit, minus your comprehensive uh, sorry, add your comprehensive income or minus a comprehensive loss. So again, just logically, mathematically talk yourself through it. In my case, it's simply add, add, add because I've already entered these figures. I've linked them and in my original financials, they were entered um, correctly as negative. So, so that's my comprehensive operating income after tax. I'm going to bold it and leave it there because that's one of the, the big babies. That's the total of my O section right there. That's the total of my um, O's right here. So that's one of the ones when I come back to calculate this baby at the end, 
I'm going to add that line plus the total that we're going to do now for my financing. Okay, so I've done the operating section, now move on to the financing section and it's going to be fairly simple for most people because all we have really are going to be a couple items. I've actually only got two. I literally only have one item of finance income, one item of finance expense. I'm going to calculate the tax easily because I've already linked my tax rates and I've got no financial comprehensive income. Last year when I did this video, I had one item of compre financial comprehensive income. So, um, so I'll still show you how to set it out because most of your companies will have at least one, well, may have at least one item of financial comprehensive income. So I'll still show you the set out. I'll just put zero in mine and then we'll, we'll get this figure. Now, have a look and see which one's bigger. So is your finance income greater than your finance expense? If it is, leave it on top. But if in my case, I've got finance expense that's greater than income, and I'll just show you that so you can believe me. So you can see my finance costs are 211 and my finance income is only 14. So obviously I have greater finance expenses. So I'm gonna put that one on top. So I'll just show you, and taking one away from the other, I'm going to get net financing expenses. If you've got greater income than expense, you're gonna have net financing income or NFI. Doesn't matter, just call it, make sure you're calling it whatever your company has got. In my case, I'm gonna call it net financial expenses because I have a net finance expense is my heading and then I'm just going to put my expenses first so let's link my expense and then I'm going to put my income second and take one away from the other so link my finance costs first I'm going to sum them because I've already entered I'm just linking and they're already entered as a negative for me which is good so I can literally just sum them to get the difference um, so I'm going to call mine NFE before tax because remember we still have to calculate the tax. So again, because I've already entered my costs as a or my expenses as a negative, I can simply sum it. If you haven't, you won't be able to sum it. You will have to do um, this one minus this one to get the difference. Okay, now we're going to put in. I'm going. This is what I'm going to calculate. I'm going to call it the tax benefit because. To me, it is a tax benefit. So essentially, this is telling me I've paid, or Wes Farmers has paid, my company has paid, 197 million more to the banks than, than they've received in interest. So this was the finance cost to Wes Farmers. This was the finance income. So they've paid a net amount greater. So they've actually paid that to the banks. So the tax man has let them have a tax deduction for that on their tax return. And the, the benefit is a savings in tax. So we call it a tax benefit. So we can calculate that by simply saying that's how much we have paid to the banks, which the tax man let us have as a deduction, T multiplied by, this is where we have to link to our company tax rate, multiplied by the tax rate for that year, which we have already found for our company. So that's how much savings that amount of interest that we pay to the bank has given us in tax. Now, this is a very important step. Notice that this is a negative. You have to talk yourself through it. So if you've got a positive, it'll be the, the opposite. So I've paid that amount to the bank. That's an expense, it's an outgoing, it's listed as a negative. Because it saved me 30% of that amount, because I was able to have it as a tax deduction on my tax return, it, the, the tax benefit to me is a positive. I didn't have to pay that tax, it saved me that tax. So this should be a positive figure for me, not a negative. So I want to negate that by just putting a little minus sign in the front. If you don't understand that, that's fine. You can just put, all I'm saying is, you will need to put a minus sign in front of this figure for your company. Your figure here has to be the opposite mathematical sign to these figures here. So you can just do that by simply inserting a little minus symbol into your formula. Um, and again, if you so if you've got the opposite to talk yourself through it, if you do want to understand it, if you've got NFI here, so greater financing income, that means the tax man has made your company included in their tax return and has taxed your company on it. So calculate, still calculate the, the tax rate the same way. So that figure times your company tax rate linked below. And it will be a negative figure here for you because you've actually had to pay extra tax. That's the tax you paid on that finance income. To the tax man. So, would so if you've got a positive figure here, your figures here will be negative. 
if you're like Wes Farmer's case and you're, you've got greater finance expenses, this figure here will be positive because that's the tax saving of your interest. Now, remember above I said, leave this blank. We're going to link to the amount because this essentially is, is the tax that we've calculated that's attributable to finance section. We're going to take that away from 100% of the tax that we've paid up here. So remember we linked 100% of the tax up here. Here's where we take it away. So simply just link it. Now, again, you'll have to link it to this, but put a little negative sign at the beginning because mathematically, if we add it in down here as a positive figure, we have to take it out up here as a negative figure and vice versa. If we added it in down here as a negative figure, we have to take it out up here as a positive figure. So whichever way it is, it doesn't matter. You, if you, and if you don't understand any of that, that's fine. When you put the formula in, just type equals, negative sign, and then link to this cell here, and then drag that formula across. That's all you need to know. But essentially, this is a line that we've added in. It didn't exist in our original financials. So because we've added it in, we've got to make sure we take it out somewhere, and that's where we take it out. And then our totals will still balance. Okay, so that's very important. So please make sure that you do those steps. So we're up to here now. We've we put my one line in of finance income, my one line in of finance costs the other way because finance costs was greater for me. So I put finance expense minus finance income. I calculated a tax attributable and remembered to take it away from 100% of the tax up here. So if it was, say, 40%, we're left with 60% of the tax up here. So still our totals will still add to the 100% of tax, this section and this section. We've just split that tax into O and F. Okay, so I've done up to here. All I've got to put now is my financial comprehensive income. And remember, I don't have any. But just in case you do, I'll take you through it. So let's just call this total net financial expenses or net financial income um, before comprehensive before financial comprehensive income, which I don't have any of, but you might. So I'm going to show you how to do that. I'll just put financial CI because I'm a bit lazy. So that's going to be the sum of my NFE before tax minus the NFE after tax, but because I've already linked it and it's already as a negative, I can simply sum it again. Makes my life nice and easy. Everything's just a sum, sum, sum. What's my error here telling me? Oh yes, that's all right. I'm happy to ignore that. It's just an inconsistent formula because I've calculated it. So ignore all that, thank you. I know that it's inconsistent. I don't want it to be consistent. I specifically want to calculate my tax in that. Okay, so now I'm going to show you if you've got financial comprehensive income, put a heading in, call it financial comprehensive income. I obviously don't. Link it here. I've got nothing to link to, so equals nothing. Like I don't actually have anything. Um, and then put a total in here and call it, so I'm just, I'll just put here, I have nothing. Um, just to show you how to set out if your firm does have it. And then I'll call it um, total financial comprehensive income. So this would be a heading. Obviously, I don't have any, so mine are just going to be zeros. Actually, I could link straight back up to my zeros up here because this is what it's linking to. Should be the same as and my total so that my total would be it's obviously just that for me but it would obviously be the total of however many items you have if you've got it so that's how you'd set it out just put it in there um, this is a total just doing a bit of formatting okay um, so that's, so that's the last section, that's a CI. Obviously I don't have any. So now I'm going to do the NFE. So this is my net finance financing expense, which is overall, don't confuse it with just this. This is the net financing expense minus the tax, plus or minus your comprehensive income or loss, in which case I don't have any. We'll go and do a total now. We'll call it net financial expenses after tax. And this is where it's very important you put your acronym in so that you don't get confused with your net financial expenses before tax up here. So this will be my 
net financial expenses before my financial comprehensive income plus or minus my positive or negative figure down here. I don't have any, so it doesn't matter for me. But if I did, again, if it was, if this is negative, this was positive, I would want to add them together. If it was negative, I would take it off. So just put in your mathematical sum and it will do it automatically for you. Okay, so let's say that's my NFE figure. Now my big test is if my NFE figure plus my OI figure up here matches to my original comprehensive um, so let's just link it to my original CI down here. This is what I want it to link to. It's got to match that figure. So let's put that down there. And your marker will be checking too that it matches. You don't really need attributable to members of the parent. But anyway, um, oh, I'll show you the check in a minute. Let's just do this first and check. Have we done it right? So this is the section we're doing. I've, I've finished doing all of these steps, financing and funds expenses, tax, CI, which I didn't have any of. I've totaled my F section, which is NFE, and I put the acronym in. So when, later on when I'm doing it, I can find it again. Now I'm going to add both of these together and check that it equals my original CI. So equals OI plus NFE, and please, please match, or I've missed something. I'm going to have to go through and go line by line again into each section and check it out. Okay, so 1347, 2891, 1347, 2891, 329 and 2248, 329 and 22. Oh, something in this section isn't working. So, oops, why can't I link it now? Anyway, this figure here minus, let's see what the difference is. It's 177. So, Check out my taxes that I've pulled all my formulas across. The first thing I always check is my formulas. Make sure I've pulled in all the figures that don't have anything for that year. Make sure I pull them across. Make sure I check in this year to, to make sure that there hasn't been a figure that I've accidentally missed. I should highlight it now. Just quickly check finance costs. All right. So I've dealt with all of that and I'll show you how to get rid of the red while I'm going. So I'm, I know I've, I've included everything. So I just want to see what I haven't, I might not have pulled the figure across properly because I've definitely included everything as I can see. And just wherever I haven't got a figure here, just make sure I've pulled my figures across totally. Checking. So I'm going to start going through every item again. So this is what you have to do. If it doesn't match in one year, usually if I can find, um, actually just let me check my tax benefit as well. Because sometimes if you link it, so what I did there was just simply double my tax benefit because sometimes I, I have forgotten to put a negative in the opposite figure when I'm linking. But they're all negatives here and they're all positives down here. So it shouldn't be my tax. That's the first thing I'll have a look at. Then I'll go in and check that my all my formulas are correct. So I've pulled them all across. So I'll just go and pull them all across again, just from here really, because every other year matches. And just check, check that my formula, so my operating income's right. Just go through, check that everyone has been pulled across. And again, my formulas are pulled across. So literally going through and just fling that last line in. It looks like I've accidentally missed something for that year, but I know I haven't because I coloured in everything in red previously. 
And it is strange that it's one year. So there's only one figure somewhere that's putting me out in that year. So I'll have to go through and find it. just pause and quickly go through and check yes I found it very easily when I went through and checked line by line so what I literally did um, in the time that I paused the video I, I went through and I redid it all over again literally went through revenue um, checked that all the revenue was listed all the operating expenses were right the tax was fine yeah, the tax wasn't when I got to the other comprehensive income do you know what I've forgotten I don't know how I'd forgotten it um, but when I link to this offset, I've missed this 177 in here. Um, so that was under my operating comprehensive income. So um, when I linked this section, I accidentally linked to the wrong row. So I literally, because it was a zero here, I forgot to actually start from there to link it. So I actually, re so I've actually linked from here first. I've linked this 96 to the actual to actually to the wrong row heading so I've missed um, linking all through that so I'll just show you um, so from here this is where it is so my exchange difference is right it's I've got it listed at 9 to 11 so that's good so I've got to start from here the zero so this is why it's really important to go back through I even had everything highlighted red and I still missed it because it was a zero and only when I literally went back and, and started doing the highlight again, I literally went from one line to the other line so it took me a little while. But that's what you have to do. Um, so I linked that one and then I can pull down to one, two, three, four, five, six, down to 72. So one, two, three, four, five, six, pull that down to 72 there fill without formatting and drag it across. So see there was a row, the tax effect had zeros in it. That was actually incorrect. Um, but because no, none of the other years had this 177, it showed me that I'd linked it correctly. But because there was one figure I'd forgotten about, that's why it's important to go and check out everything. So now when I do my double check, 1347289132929 and 2248, which is right. So now I'm happy that I've done it correctly. So it's good that that was in there, it showed you. And that's literally it, that's restating the income statement. All I'm gonna do now is quickly just show you a couple of double checks. So going back to my slides here, I showed you how OI plus NFE equals comprehensive income. And that's what we literally just did, OI plus NFE equals of, of original comprehensive income. If it doesn't, I'm sorry, you're gonna to have to do what I just did and go through every line and re-highlight again. So make sure you're doing every line. And, and what I did when I found that was, when I went through and checked every line, I checked not just the heading, but the number that it started with. And that was how I noticed that that particular item of comprehensive income had an amount in it. And I thought, hang on, in the original financials, it had a zero. And that's how I found it. So that's what you literally have to go do, go back through and, and check every line again. Um, and then you also can check that your operating comprehensive income and your financing comprehensive income match what you've already put in your statement of changes in equity. I know mine do because I only had operating comprehensive income. So here's my operating, total operating comprehensive income. I actually didn't have any here. I had um, financing comprehensive income with zero. But if you've got those figures there, then go back and check those as well. My operating comprehensive income of 150, 18, 78, and 192. I'm going to go right back up to the top and check um, the total that I've actually got for other operating comprehensive income, which is my total because I don't have any financing ones. It's all zero. So it's 150, 18, 78, and 192. So it does match. Um, if I had financing comprehensive income, I would have a total for, for these three items called total operating comprehensive income, and that's the total. For me, it's the same as my total because I don't have any financial and it does match. So just check that your OCI and your FCI down here, this is your OCI, this is your FCI, sorry, down here, FCI, 
um, matches what you've already done as a split up, matches the total of what you've done as a split, split up in your statement of changes in equity that you've restated. And that's it. That's the hardest statement to restate done. So I'll see you on the next video for ratios.